burning oil. Smoke coming from the exhaust, leaking to the cooling system, leaking down past the piston rings to the crankcase, leaking into the intake. Not good. Not good. Ah, that's not good. What's going on guys? Now you might remember a little while ago that I was having a problem with this car losing oil but I couldn't find any leaks. There's no smoke coming from the exhaust and I just can't figure out where it's going. Now these cars are notorious for giving inaccurate dipstick readings, but they're also notorious for burning oil. So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find out whether I've been topping this up unnecessarily. We're gonna do a compression test. We're gonna do a leak down test and I'm gonna change the oil and see just how much oil actually comes out of it because I've put over two bottles, so more than 10 liters of oil in this thing. So fingers crossed. I haven't put too much in. So the first test we're gonna do is a compression test and it essentially measures the amount of pressure generated by the piston as the engine cranks. And if we've got low compression, it means there's a leak either down into the crankcase, past the piston rings, up through the intake or exhaust valves into either the inlet or to the exhaust, or it could even be leaking across into other cylinders or into coolant jackets in the engine if the head gasket is damaged. So let's get the compression tester hooked up and see what sort of compression we've got on each cylinder. So I'm gonna remove the ignition leads, remove the spark plugs, then I'm gonna select the appropriate adapter for the compression tester and connect this to the hose. Then I'm going to screw this into the spark plug hole in the first cylinder. Then the gauge just attaches to here with a quick connect fit in. And then before we run the compression test, we want to remove the fuel pump fuse so that no fuel is squirted into the cylinder while we're running the test. Not only would this be a waste, but we could flood the engine and cause ourselves more issues further down the line. Okay, so now we're ready to run the compression test. So I'm going to get someone in the car to crank the engine over for me. And we're going to test all four cylinders and then I'll show you the results. We're looking for a consistent result between all four cylinders. We have any outliers, anything that's dramatically different than the other cylinders, then we know we've got a problem with that cylinder. Okay, cylinder one, 150 PSI. Okay, start. Okay, cylinder two, 75 PSI, so that's not good. Okay, cylinder three, 150 PSI. Okay, and cylinder four, 50 PSI, so even worse than cylinder two. Okay, so in case you weren't following along with that or you couldn't see the dial properly, I'll run you up to speed on what happened. So we got 150 PSI in cylinder one, we got 75 PSI in cylinder two, we got 150 PSI in cylinder three, and we got 50 PSI in cylinder four. Not good. So we've got two cylinders that are really bad. Okay, so the results of the compression test were not good and it's starting to become a bit of a theme on this channel. So we know the air is escaping from the cylinders. What we don't know is where it's escaping to. So the next test, we're gonna find out where it's escaping to because that's probably where our oil's going as well. Okay, so the next test we wanna do is a leak down test or cylinder leakage test. I've already got most of it hooked up, but basically what we do is we use an air compressor to force air into the cylinders one at a time, and then we measure the percentage leakage from that cylinder. This little device here does that. So I've got this adapter screwed into the first cylinder, into the spark plug hole, the same as what we did with the compression tester. And then I've gone ahead and removed the cap off the coolant reservoir I've gone ahead and removed the dipstick. I've taken off the air filter assembly because we want to use this opening in the throttle body. Uh, we'd like to test the exhaust as well, but I can't find an O2 sensor that's in an easy location. So we'll start with these things first, but basically what we're going to be doing is listening in all those different points to see if air is escaping. We should see bubbling in here if it's leaking to the cooling system. We should be able to hear air escaping through the dipstick tube if it's leaking down past the piston rings to the crankcase, or if it's leaking into the intake through the inlet valves, then we should hear it through the throttle body here. And I've gone ahead and picked up the mechanic stethoscope so we can hear in the awkward places like the dipstick tube. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while and you've seen the work I've done on my Mark 7 so far, you'll know that we did a leak down test on that as well. Now, you're supposed to have the car running up to temperature before you do a leak down test, but I couldn't do that with the Mark 7 because, well, it doesn't run. But I have had this running for a good 10, 15 minutes to get it up to temperature, so we're ready to do the test. I've also gone ahead and made sure that this cylinder is at top dead center of the compression stroke. You need 
to make sure the cylinder you're testing is at top dead center of the compression stroke. The exhaust stroke is no good because at that point, your valves are gonna be open. So all the air is gonna leak out into the exhaust and inlet valve. So that is pointless. You want it to be at top dead center of the compression stroke. So I've made sure that's where it is. If you do get a really odd reading, then it's probably because you're at top dead center of the exhaust stroke. So just rotate the crank one full turn. Okay, so we're nearly ready to run the test, but first of all, we've got to set up the leakage tester. So it's ready now. Different testers are gonna be slightly different. This one requires between 45 and 100 PSI supply from the compressor. So I've already set that up on the compressor, but then basically I just need to adjust the dial down here until this needle comes around to the zero in the set area so that we're set and ready to test. So there we go, we're down to zero. And then all we need to do is connect this tube to the one in the cylinder using the quick connector, and then we can measure the percentage leakage in that cylinder and then have a listen in all those different places that I talked about earlier to see where air is actually escaping to. Okay so cylinder one is actually pretty good. We haven't even got 20% leakage on that cylinder so that is awesome and I can't hear anything clearly escaping so I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually really happy with that cylinder. That one is good. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is move on to cylinder two, and then we'll show you listening for air leaks in that one because we know the air is definitely escaping from that cylinder because that one was low on the compression test. So I'm gonna remove the tube from cylinder one. I'm gonna place the dipstick in the spark plug hole in cylinder two. Then I'm gonna rotate the crankshaft until the dipstick reaches the top of its travel. And that way I know the cylinder is a top dead center. Then I can remove the dipstick, screw in the tube to the spark plug hole in cylinder two, set the tester to zero, and then connect it up. And this is really not good. We've got about 90% leakage on that cylinder. So now we've got to find out where it's going. I don't think it's going into the cooling system because we don't have any bubbles in the coolant tank. So I'm gonna listen in to the dipstick tube to see if we're leaking to the crankcase. Then I'm gonna have a listen into the inlet port and see if we're leaking into the inlet. Okay, so first off, I'm gonna try the dipstick tube. So I'm gonna put the stethoscope down into the tube. And I can't hear anything in there. Let's try throttle body. I can't hear anything in there either. And I've just had a listen into the exhaust pipe. Now I know at the right at the back of the exhaust, I'd probably be unlikely to hear anything if it was leaking into the exhaust, but I can't hear it leaking anywhere, which is really strange. I can't think where else it might be going, but we've definitely got a really high percentage leakage on this cylinder. Now I know this is the compression stroke because it did actually go way too far before when I did it. I actually went around to the exhaust stroke because as soon as I connected this, I had 100% leakage straight away. This was around 90%, it's now gone up to about 95%, which is really, really bad, but I just can't work out where it's actually going. So I'm a little bit stuck. Okay, so I'm moving on to cylinder three. I've just made sure that's at top dead center. So let's screw this in. And on cylinder three, we actually have a pretty good reading. It's not quite as good as cylinder one, so it's not perfect, but we're still in a low leakage, about 20%. So fingers crossed we should be okay on that one, but this is still really weird. I can't work out why. I can't actually see any signs of where this is escaping to. I'm gonna have another read and see if I can find out any other places you can like listen or look for things, because uh, that is a bit strange. But before I do that, I am just gonna do cylinder four and see if that gives us anything. And hopefully then we can come to some sort of conclusion as to what's going on here. Okay, so cylinder four is a bit of an odd one because it's still not horrendous like i still wouldn't want that but i mean we're creeping towards what like 35 percent there which is weird because that one was a lot lower on the compression test in cylinder two which was at like 90 percent leakage but already i'm pretty sure i can hear air escaping through the dipstick tube so i'm just going to pop the mechanic stethoscope back on and just see if i can confirm that okay and i can definitely hear air escaping through the dipstick tube because if i disconnect this and then listen again, there's nothing. So on cylinder four at least, we definitely got a leak down to the crankcase. So it's gonna be piston rings or 
maybe damage to the pistons or the cylinder wall or something like that but most likely that is going to be piston rings which is really annoying because bottom end which means it's a hell of a lot more work i'm still really confused about cylinder two and i'm going to have another go at that one and just see what i can actually find there but i'm guessing it's going to be the same thing but for some reason it's just not evident through the dipstick tube maybe i'll just have a better listen i mean i wasn't really too sure exactly how to do it i was kind of poking around with this thing in there while i had it in my ears which is no good i think it's better if you put it in let it settle so you're not like hearing any weird noises of it like scraping in the tube because all that sort of stuff comes through and it just makes it hard to hear so I'm going to try cylinder two again, have a really good listen through that dipstick tube and everywhere else again. But either way, cylinder four, it's definitely bottom end. So, ah, uh, that's not good. Okay, so just having a listen again. Yeah, you know what? I definitely can hear it in the dipstick tube again with that cylinder. So, there, yeah, looks like it's piston rings, looks like it's bottom end. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what more there is to say. Um, I'll come back to you in a minute. I'm a bit bit gutted, if I'm honest. Now, I could take this one step further to confirm my diagnosis of piston rings because when I was learning to do a leak down test by watching some videos on YouTube, one of the videos that I watched suggested that if you suspect piston rings, then you should add a teaspoon of oil to the spark plug hole and then repeat the leak down test on that cylinder. And hopefully what that oil will do is it will temporarily seal the piston rings and you should get a better reading. So that is one way to check it. But for me, I'm pretty confident that that's what it is. Either way, I'm pretty sure that we need some major work done on this engine, so I'm not gonna go that far today. But there is one more thing I wanna do before we finish this video, and that is to do a quick oil change and see just how much oil actually comes out of this thing. Okay, so the sump plug's back in and I've changed over the oil filter, but just quickly before I top up the oil, I'm just gonna show you what I'm using because this was asked on one of the Facebook pages the other day. So I'm using Manol 5W30 Fully Synthetic. Now someone was asking whether or not this oil is any good for our cars. Now it is one of the cheaper oils and it's not a very well-known brand. I have heard of them before, but it's not one of the most known brands out there. But the reason I've actually gone for this one, yes, it was cheap, but if you look on the back, this is what a lot of branded oils don't actually do. A lot of them do, but some don't. And it actually states the Ford specification right there, which is in the owner's manual. That is why I use this oil, because it actually states on the bottle that it meets the Ford specification in the owner's manual. Another thing that we need to get from the owner's manual is the capacity. So for the two litre Duratec, now this time I haven't pre-filled the oil filter. The last time I did, so including the oil filter, the whole system takes 4.3 liters. I didn't pre-oil the filter, so we need the full 4.3 liters in here. Okay, 4.3 liters, done. So I've got the oil that came out of the car here in this container and I've got an empty engine oil bottle. So I'm just gonna pour this into there and then read from the side of it and just see how much oil was actually in the engine. Okay, so just to show you, we are bang on four litres. Yeah, four litres of oil came out of it, and I definitely put more than that in it since the last time I did an oil change, so we are definitely burning oil, and after what we found out today, I think we know why. So there we have it. Now we know why the car is losing oil, and it's not good news at all. Yeah, I'm gutted about it, but I guess it means more content for the channel and I get to learn a lot more about these engines because I'm definitely going to be tackling whatever I do to fix this myself, but I'll have to have a think about it and let you know in a coming video. Now, one thing I want to touch on just quickly is that these videos aren't filmed the same week that you see them. I actually did the oil change probably three or four weeks ago and I haven't topped up the oil since I did that. I checked the dipstick earlier and it's still at the full mark and I've been driving this car normally to work and back and wherever else I go, you know, as I normally would. So. It seems really strange that the oil hasn't gone down since that, but it was definitely going down before because it was going down to like below the minimum on the dipstick like every two weeks. 
So I'm not really sure what's going on there, but I know we definitely got a problem based on the testing we've done in this video. So just to clarify for those of you that don't really understand what I'm trying to say here, or don't quite understand what's going on with the testing that we've done today, what I think is happening and where I think the oil is going is as the engine's running, it's leaking up past the piston rings from the crankcase into the combustion chamber and is being burnt while the engine is running. So that is where I think most of the oil is going. I know really I should be seeing some sort of smoke out the exhaust, probably blue smoke as well because burning oil normally means blue smoke, but I'm not sure if that's meant to be just valve stem seals. I don't really know, but I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments below. But either way, we've got some pretty serious engine work to do on this car and that will be coming in a future video. So if you're not already subscribed to this channel and you can't wait to find out what actually happens and what I'm gonna do to fix it, then make sure you subscribe Otherwise, you might miss that. But for this video, it is time to end. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.